Hi ho, Mitzi Goose here, and we just wanted to show you our SoCat software. Now, when we were looking for SoCat, we were looking for a software that would display all of our embroidery designs as well as allow us to resort the designs. So we actually store the designs on our computer by designer and by collection. However, as you know, if you buy lots of different designs or collections, you will get lots of different flowers, lots of different snowflakes, lots of different quilting designs, and so forth. So if you're looking for just that perfect quilting design, you may have to go through all sorts of different subfolders through all your designers in order to find it. And that was the problem we were trying to solve with SoCat. So let's just look at the embroidery designs that we have on our computer. So let's say we wanted to see all of the things that we bought from Designs by Juju. This would show us all the different things. Uh, and as you can tell, it's kind of an overwhelming list of all the different fonts and so forth. One thing you'll notice is there are different pieces of information here that you can change so that you can display the number of stitches, the number of colors, and you'll see there are three different colors here, and that's because it's an applique design as well as the size. So these are things that you can configure on some of the different screens so that you can see. But if you just click on a designer, uh, you will get an overwhelming number of designs. So let's say I only want to see the Holly Gingers. These are kind of gingerbread characters. They're kind of cute. Um, we have ours set up so that it will display the JPEGs that are in these folders. And that's why you're now seeing some of the different um, sew out instructions and so forth for the Holly Gingers. Now, here are some different uh, designs. This one has a tree, and some of these colors are a little bit odd. I suspect it's because it's an EXP file, um, because you'll notice on the sew out that the gingerbreads are actually brown and not purple. But you get an idea of how many colors are in the design, and there are several in here only because they are appliques. So you have some of the different applique um, placement stitches and so forth, and that's going to multiply the number of colors that you have in these designs. That alone is kind of worth having the SoCat software. But let's say we have the situation that we were describing earlier where you want to resort your designs. If you want to add a folder, so we've actually already added the Sashiko folder because we're going to add in these Sashiko designs that are here. We just got these. We're going to add them to our quilting folder. And the reason for that is because we think these would make great alternatives to the traditional kind of straight line grid or diamond types of quilting. They're kind of loose designs so that they can just do a simple quilting just to fasten three layers together, which are used in tote bags and, and that sort of thing. To add this folder, what we had done was you click on this folder here, which is, you know, your quilting folder, and then you click insert a folder. Does that look like the copy icon? Yes, it does. That's why it's very confusing to us. And then this one is not cut. This is the Lita folder. Okay. We had to read the help description to find that. But let's say we, we already have the Sashiko folder. To put all of these designs into this folder over here, we're going to click on this one, hold our shift button, and then scroll all the way down. Okay. Now we've selected them all. And then you just drag them over here to the Sashiko folder. Okay, so now we have a second Sashiko folder of some additional designs, and we're going to do the same thing. Okay, click, I'm holding the shift button, click again, drag them over to the Sashiko folder. And then we'll just do the third one here. 
and hold the shift button. Boom. Boom. Okay, so now if I had other Sashiko designs from other designers, I would put them into my Sashiko folder. Now let's say I, I go, I want to see all the Sashiko designs that I have. I will click on this over here, and now I am looking. Regardless of which folder it came from on my computer, I can now see every Sashiko design I have. Okay. Now, let's say I have a roughly a, a maybe a five inch space on my project, and I want to fill that in with a quilting design. Okay. So, if I want to find all of the designs that will fit into a five inch space, I will click on the quilting folder. And you can kind of tell from the names. Some of these came from OESD. Some of them came from, let's see, these were Sarah Vedler's, um, and so forth. So I've got all sorts of different designs in my quilting folder from different places in my uh, computer here. But if I want to find one, I am going to say roughly, if it's between four and five inches high, between four and five inches wide, that's the design I want to find in my quilting folder. Okay, remember these are the ones that are checked off. Now I'm going to say okie dokie. And you'll see these are all the ones that are roughly um, between four and five inches that will probably fit into my little space. There they are. And I guess this one was the only Sashiko design that I have that is roughly a uh, five by five. Now I do recommend that you put a range because let's say this one here, 4.8 by 4.8, that'll fit into my five inch space. Even without resizing it, I probably would stick it right in there. Now this one over here, this one's a little on the small side. Maybe I could upsize it a little bit and make it fit. Maybe not. Kind of depends on what your project is and and your tolerance. However, I think that of any of the designs, some of these quilting designs are ones that will probably resize pretty well. However, I would prefer to use a design that was designed much closer to the right size, which would probably be these guys here. And... I'm guessing that Sarah probably designed them to be just smaller than five inches to fit into a five inch space very nicely. Now, let's say I want to find all of my snowflakes. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to just click on my snowflake folder. If you say, oh, those look a little blurry, I can't see it, just double click on them. And then it's much crisper over here, so you can kind of see better what it looks like. You know, the, these ones are going to be heavier. Um, they may actually be freestanding lace. Uh, these are really more kind of, you know, lighter designs, not as heavily stitched. And, uh, yeah, these are also very light designs that aren't going to be very prominent in the design. So depending on what you're trying to emphasize, maybe you want to emphasize the snowflake, or maybe the snowflake's really in the background. And if that snowflake's in the background, then this is really more of a design I want. Notice the number of stitches. This is um, 5 inches, 4,200 stitches. This one's 4 inches also. But is 11,000 stitches. So there again, if you're looking for a very heavy design, then you might want to find one with a higher minimum value of stitches versus a lower uh, number of stitches. Similarly, you might want single color designs and you can search by that and so forth. So this is another uh, feature that I found in SoCat. I have not found um, in many other software. So you might find a software that will allow you to search by stitches, but it may not allow you to do the virtual catalog and so forth. So for 40 bucks, finding all these features in one software, I think is fabulous. 
Now, there are people who say, yeah, well, my software that costs $2,000 has all that stuff in it. Well, unfortunately, I don't have the $2,000 software. So if you're just starting out and you need an inexpensive software just to get going, so cat's great. If you have the $2,000, $3,000 software that has all this built in, great, use it. Maybe you don't want SoCat, but just wanted to show you what the offering is so that you can decide for yourself whether you might like this or might not. So thanks for watching.